Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more The Old World content. So as of today, today is Monday, today is the day that this video will go out. We are releasing The Old World this Saturday. So this is basically the week lead up to the official launch of The Old World. We've had the pre-order, but people will start to get it in their hands as of this week. And I cannot explain to you how excited I am. If you've watched a bunch of my videos already, you probably know how excited I am. For anyone who is new here, then trust me, the old world is a big deal for me and it's something that I'm very much looking forward to. So I've decided to go all in this week. This is just gonna be old world week. I'm gonna put out five or six videos this week all about old world. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I've already done videos for Bretonian Knights, the uh, the new Baron on his Royal Pegasus. I've done the Bretonian uh, Peasant Archer. I've done a Beastman. I've done Wood Elves. Tomb Kings, and today I'm gonna to add dwarves to that ensemble and get a very beautiful classic Dwarf Lord miniature painted. You will know this guy if you have been around a long time, you'll know that he is considered to be one of the greatest sculpts of all time. In fact, kind of the first time they ever did a list of, you know, top 50 nicest miniatures from Games Workshop, this guy came second. So he is, without a doubt, a legend. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You guys are awesome. Without you guys, I'm not be able to keep these lights on and the camera rolling. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you're interested in getting involved in that and supporting the channel, there's links in the description below, access to a private Discord server, and an extra video every single week is just two of the awesome benefits of becoming a member. And the second thing is I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you want to help me do that, hit that subscribe button. I have plans to give away a Titan at the end of this year. Which Titan I give away depends on how many subscribers I get. If I get to the 100,000, I will be giving away a World Lord Titan. So if that's something that interests you, then hit that button. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get in there and start painting up a dwarf. Okay, so this is the Dwarf Lord with Great Axe. Like I said, he's an iconic miniature because he's not in a war pose. He's in such a casual pose. Axe uh, blade down, leaning on the little pommel beard flowing on either side holding his helmet it's just it's just one of those models that they brought out it was so simple it really wasn't much to it but the community rallied around it and just thought it was absolutely amazing to this day i think it still holds up now back in the day i was not very good at painting so i, I was honestly afraid of this kind of miniature so let's see if i can tackle it now and make it any better than a younger version of me could so fire slayer flesh contrast is of course the first paint i use and I use that to block in all of the skin on this miniature. And obviously his skin is a little bit harder to block in than normal because his beard is flowing up and over his hands and he's got obviously these big bushy eyebrows and his moustache and everything. So being a little bit careful, you don't want to stain the beard too much because we're going to go for a lighter beard tone. This guy was always kind of depicted with a kind of a blondie style of hair. And I want to follow suit with that more traditional thing. Maybe he's a younger lord, if you will. He's only 67 years of age or whatever. So he's a... A young hip dwarf. I kind of like that idea and I want to follow through. So Agaro's Dunes was the color I used as the base coat for all that magnificent hair. And his beard really does flow down like over his hands all the way down to the ground on the front. And he has a big ponytail on the back. So make sure you get in and do that. And it, including, which most miniatures are missing, he does have great big bushy eyebrows. So you want to get in there at the Agaro's Dunes and get that base coated as well. This is one of those miniatures that back in the day, it only cost like 12 euro or something for, for this awesome little character. I do really miss the charm of that. There is something to be said for kind of digging through my boxes of older miniatures and pulling out these old classic things, which I had such reverence for. And getting to clean them up and get them a new loose of life and get them painted. It's getting me kind of more excited than new, big, beautiful sculpts are. It's, it's giving me a weird feeling. I love it. Uh, lead belcher was then brought in i actually argued with myself for a little while as to what color the armor on this guy was going to be traditional dwarf style or i had this idea of doing kind of a big red and gold scheme i do a lot of red though so i decided to stay away from it and stick with a more traditional kind of iron and gold style for armor so the first thing i did do was that lead belcher coat and i basically covered the entire armor all the chain mail the head of the axe and any of your bits and pieces that i thought were suitable you know he's got steel toe cap boots and the kind of soles of his boots are metal as well so you want to get in there with the lead belcher and do that including his big beautiful it almost looks like an iron breaker helmet like it's obviously quite a, a well-crafted thing and he would look very very well as a, a unit champion for unit of iron drakes or unit of iron breakers as you can see quite a lot of silver so we're gonna try and break that up now with some gold and of course i'm gonna reach for my old faithful uh, retributor armor gold use that as the base coat color and go around and try and find all the parts that i think should be gold in this miniature because it's kind of hard 
if you kind of Google image this guy, you get so many different results of people that have painted him for different competitions over the years and have decided different parts should be different tones. But I went generically for all the trim on the armor. So obviously there's trim on, you know, the ends of both of his sleeves and around the end of his kind of skirt mail thing. A lot of his helmet is going to get a lot of gold, a lot of trim on that, including like a, a kind of like a beard protector on the bottom of the helmet. I did that in gold. There's a, some kind of design on his axe. I did that in gold and a couple of the the rings on the haft of his axe are obviously gold as well. So it's just a case of playing Where's Wally, like I've said a million times before, trying to find those parts that uh, suit the color and then getting in there with the gold and attacking it. Obviously, these are all flat base coats. We will be hitting it with a shade later on and then adding some nice layer colors to this to uh, really make this old character little dwarf pop. I think we've used four paints so far and he's almost entirely blocked in. I just, I do love this new world that we live in of contrast paints and shades and paints that work. I mean, we struggled our way through the old Hammer uh, or Warhammer Fantasy for many years with bad paints. You need a degree in chemistry to make them work to your will. Remember back in the day, red was considered a really difficult color to paint. People struggled with it all the time. And now it's, you know, the two beautiful red contrasts that uh, will knock a nice clean red coat out in no time. It's, it's insane. Wildwood was used for his boots, apart from the, the, the metal tip parts. I also played it a little bit into some of the shadows, like in between the kind of axe and the body. He's got a book hanging from his belt as well. I did that there. Volopus Pink was then brought out for the haft of the axe. I do like doing the pinky whiny colours. Burgundies and stuff for axe hilts and sword handles. It's just this easy way to add a little bit of flair of colour into the model without going crazy. Now it's time to shade this beast down. And for this we are going to tackle with Nullin Oil. And we're going to shade the entire thing. I did briefly consider tackling the skin with a different shade. And I will layer this, this skin later on with a more ready tone to, to kind of pull it in the direction that I want for dwarves. But I think for now, a nice all over Nolan oil, protect the contrast paint, protect the metal miniature, almost basically giving it like a varnish kind of thing. And then obviously adding some texture paste to the base, AK Interactive Brown Ground or whatever it's called. It's just amazing. Obviously waited for this bad boy to dry and then I finished up the base, gave it a quick dry brush and rimmed the uh, the edge of the base black. And then I was ready to start layering up this awesome little dwarf lord. So the first thing I did was grab a Zandri dust and I started layering up the beard and his hair. Now later on in this video I did decide to push the hair on the beard even further. I grabbed some Morgast bone for like a final highlight. If I knew I was going to do that at this point, I would have done it after this stage. But unfortunately, I didn't realize I needed to kind of make the hair pop a little bit more until near the end. So if you want to, you can do the Morgast bone step now. You will see me doing it later on so you can see what it looks like. But yeah, this is probably the time when I would I would do it. I like kind of completing parts as I go. So, so for instance, the hair will be the first thing I finish. And then obviously you move on to the armor and then skin and weapon. You know what I mean? As you can see, I'm, I'm being careful. Zandri does fine, pointed brush. I'm following the direction the hair is going. I'm basically painting in strands. Not that it's hard to see. The strands are very much evident in these old miniatures as they were all kind of hand sculpted. The, uh, the individual strands of hair aren't individual strands of hair size as comparable to the miniature. So it stands out a little bit more, makes it a lot easier to paint. From here, we're going to go over to Ironbreaker and we're going to highlight all the metallic parts, not the gold. Usually we do do gold and silver, the same tones, and we highlight them with the same color. But for this one, I decided we are going to go for like these guys are artisans. Dwarven equipment should be held in a little bit more reverence than kind of old battered or worn equipment. So I'm going to jump straight to Ironbreaker and I'm going to layer in all the, the silver parts of the armor. As you can see, I'm just using the tip of the brush and adding like little dots of uh, silver all around it. I don't want like solid, solid coats. I don't want to obscure all the previous work that we did. I just want a nice little highlight. Definitely going to figure out which uh, couple of dwarf units I'm going to start with when I do that collection. And uh, is this guy going to be a general or is he going to be a unit champion? Or what do you think he should be? Rune Lord Brass is the color I decided to go in with and layer up all that gold like i said i didn't want to go for kind of bright and crazy these guys are artisans they know how to uh, make stunning equipment and it's very ancestral these this 
suit of armor could have been his great 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 grandfather's so there is definitely a sense of kind of like antiqueness to it so i didn't want this bright gaudy gold i want something a little bit more worn and i think the ruler brass definitely did what i wanted it to do in pushing the gold in that direction model starting to come together now screamer pink was then brought in to highlight the haft of the axe and this like the morgast bone earlier i thought i was going to leave it here but i did actually grab some pink horror and i did a 50 50 mix of pink horror and screamer pink and did one last highlight on the haft at the very end like i said if i knew i was going to do that at this point i would do it as the next step I didn't realize it so i did it at the end so once again you can see me doing it at the end but if you're following along with this step for any of your dwarven weapons or anything and all the other guys i would do that step now now it's time for make or break time and for that we are going to move over to the uh, duncan Rhodes paint so i am not the biggest fan of the games workshop skin tone they're, they're just i don't know whether they're weak in pigment or whether i'm just not very good with them but i find them to be like subpar if you will and whenever i'm trying to do kind of natural caucasian skin i tend to reach for the duncan Rhodes two thin coats from transatlantic games those paints and i use their two tones so this is dwarf skin and elf skin are the two tones i'm going to use from their range and as you can see, I'm going in with the dwarf skin now and just highlighting all the skin, making sure to leave all that dark null and oil in all the recesses. I want big, like, kind of craggy features. This is a dwarf. This is not a smooth skinned elf or anything like that. You want this miniature to feel the weight of ages on his face. You know, the guy that's been in the mine for 50 years and loving every second of it. As you can see, I'm going in. I'm being very careful. I'm picking up those eyes. And once again, because it's a hand sculpted model it's not cad it's not digitally designed where you know the features are perfectly proportioned and the, like the depth of the eye socket is perfect and the crease in the skin is per like because these are hand sculpted the, the depth of things are a little bit more everything's a little bit more rough and it's a little bit more exaggerated which means when you get to the layering stage of painting it it's a lot easier and it's a lot more fun and it's a lot more intuitive and it's a lot more enjoyable i just really enjoy painting them so after that highlight, I did grab some Karienberg Crimson. I thinned it down just a little bit, a few drops of water. And then I applied that as a coat originally over just the top of the face. I wanted to do the face as a more pinky tone. I did end up doing this stage on all the skin before I did the final highlight with the uh, elf flesh. You'll see now, as I apply the, the pinky tone to the skin, that's what the face looks like. I haven't done it to the arms yet, but I am going to. I grabbed in my elf flesh or elven skin, should I say, sorry. And I went in with a final highlight on the face. Very tips of nose, you know, tops of cheeks, kind of the edges of the, it's just, it's, it's quite easy to do, like I said, because it's so predominant. You have to be careful because you're painting in around so much beard, mustache and fringe. And of course his eyebrows. <laughs> But I was so happy with the result. That's what made me go, that's it. Caribou crimson the rest of the skin and do the last highlight like this. And I just put a lot of warmth into it. You know, that rosy red cheeks. The dwarves have the big red noses like they've been drinking too much port. Yeah, it's just it's an enjoyable process. Anyone out there who hasn't experienced Old World, who is, you know, a child in the hobby of the last kind of like 10 years. So you've only seen all these beautiful plastic miniatures. I challenge you to go out, go onto eBay, type in Warhammer Fantasy, buy an old miniature, an old metal miniature for a couple of euro and give it a go try painting it promise you you won't be disappointed it's just it's an experience some of you may not enjoy the medium of metal miniatures it never bothered me whatsoever it's something that i i enjoy quite a lot uh, there's that half pink half screamer pink uh color that i did for the half and finish that off and here's the morgas bone i was talking about for the last highlight on the hair you can see that pinky warmth in all of the skin now because i have followed through and done it on all of it Another step that I did not show in the video is I grabbed that iron breaker again and I painted the two gemstones. So one is in the top of his axe and one is in the kind of forehead of his helmet with a bright silver. Then I grabbed the Talazar blue contrast and just painted one coat of that over the top of the gems just to give it that idea of a, a kind of a bright glowing blue gemstone. And that pretty much brought the, the end of painting this dwarf miniature. I have 
there's 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 a lot I have I have so many old dwarf sculpts like there's so few of them the original ones that I don't have that I would love to paint more of these guys up and get an excuse to get a dwarf army on the table but I'm gonna try and follow along with the games which have results so I'm gonna do a Bretonian army now and then when they release the dwarven army box perhaps I can then delve in and do it there this is the finished result like I said super proud of it I think for a 20 year old model or whatever it still stands up it's still beautiful here's a couple of still images to give you guys an example of what it really looks like and what it will look like on the table and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you guys are looking forward to the rest of the old world week I have something pretty special planned for the end of the week so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that okay guys and there we have it this dwarf lord is finished painted based and ready to rock and roll I'm actually extremely proud of how he turned out I've owned this miniature for about 20 years and I've never had the courage to paint him because he's always been painted so well by MV Metal teams and another amazing guys and I never thought I would be able to reach the, the kind of skill level to get him done and um, I am quite proud of the result that I did achieve and I hope you guys enjoy it as well if you did enjoy this video make sure you give it a like ask me any questions you want in the comments below I will get back to each and every one of you guys I still to this day have not missed a comment and um Make sure you're subscribed to the channel to be on a chance of winning a Warlord Titan. And, of course, for all the awesome Old World content coming in the next couple of weeks. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the very end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.